composing gloves here and today we're looking at a site I made in one month after knowing literally nothing about web development. So I didn't know any JavaScript. I didn't know any CSS, HTML. I didn't even know what these things were. I like loosely knew about HTML. Uh, PHP had, I like kind of knew a thing about, I knew it was a thing, a language. That was pretty much the extent of my knowledge. And a uh, trigger happened about a month ago that caused me to really deep dive into this. And I wound up making this website for my dad's company. And um, I'm working on my site, which is why there's been almost no videos because I'm dead set to get as much of this done before school starts. So uh, anyways, yeah, made this site and I'm going to walk you through some of the things that were very challenging to me because and, and just sort of how I figured stuff out as I went, because I am pretty happy with where it turned out. So this is the site. Um, again, I had zero knowledge. It, I pretty much learned everything from either YouTube or looking it up on Stack Exchange or somewhere, you know, the way programming is learned and uh, things like scrolling and, and this changes, having uh, this thing so that when you do that, that moves over and the hamburger thing appears and, you know, you go away. And if you click it, you know, look at, wow, it's so crazy. And when you click on this, like it takes you to that page, like stuff that's pretty normal. But I was like, oh my gosh, check this out. It has a little blue dope underline thing that tells you what page you're on. If you click over here, look, oh my gosh. Like, so I was pretty excited about really small things. Also, when you click off, because I was like, mobile users aren't going to want to click on this menu again to close it. They're going to want to just, you know, use their thumb and click off. I got that figured out, figuring out how small is screen I should design for. Um, if I go to one of these pages, I came up with, you know, you click on it, the picture, that picture appears. Like that was such a big deal to me. This took a long time to figure out, at least for me, because I, I, I wanted it general because I had a lot of these and all the examples I saw and see again, the click thing, you don't have to click the X. You can click anywhere. It's beautiful. If you're working on the phone, it's gotta be great. So uh, a lot of this stuff, uh, yeah. So just learning things along the way, getting stuff like that to work. And, and this is the, this is the website. This is what I made. And it uses uh, Node.js and Heroku to be launched. And I even got the SSL thing figured out and basically did all the, all that stuff for free. So, so uh, let me give you some background on where I was starting from. So I didn't know any of this other stuff, but what I did have on my side was I've, I'm an electrical engineering student and I am one more semester. I'll actually have my degree of a bachelor's of electrical engineering along the way. Uh, I tested out of the first two C++ classes, which were, which aren't even required for my major, but, uh, I always like C++. So I just got a book and read it. So I did know some C++ and I took the last of the three basic C++ courses and I just scorched every course I took with that. I really enjoyed the coding and uh, I took a numerical methods class. And so, you know, writing the algorithms on how to do stuff like integrals or logs, things of that nature. If you actually have my book, Sound and Synth Basics, I have a numerical method you could use by hand to do logarithms of arbitrary integers. So you do like log base two by hand and, and get a really accurate answer. It might take a little bit, but it's a process you can actually use and do. Uh, so there's stuff like that that I was into. I also took a class on assembly. I took an ARM Cortex-M class. We did a lot of microcontroller stuff and also took a assembly class on MASM, which is for like Windows. And then I also took a class on... Um, uh, oh, well, I did MATLAB and I actually coded my own VST and it actually works in a DAW. It's the crappiest VST you'll see because MATLAB still doesn't properly support generators and MIDI in any kind of a nice way. And at the time I knew very little C++. So the chance of me actually going through and using a library effectively was like zero. So I was surviving off documentation that existed in MATLAB. Uh, but my project was loads farther than a lot of other students because I, you know, I loved audio. So I, I've just poured a lot of time into doing that. Uh, and also, uh, there was one other class. Oh yeah. VHDL. It's this, uh, hardware level language and has some really cool properties to it. So it wasn't like I was a stranger to programming, but I didn't know anything about web development. And there were things that were extremely confusing to me. So for example, uh, PHP and Node.js. I was like, what the heck? Uh, they're back end languages what does that mean <laughs> front end what the heck does that mean 
Because to me, the whole thing is just a website. So I was like, you know, it's the website. You just do the website stuff. I didn't realize that the stuff that you see and look at and like click and do like the form, I, I didn't realize you could make the front of the form and not be responsible for what the making the form actually work. So the form actually working is like back end stuff. So this was like news to me. Uh, so the, cause I, cause since I had done programming before and I'd gotten up to polymorphism and C plus plus, I wasn't that great at, at programming because I mean, I did really, really well, but I was just so new and a lot of it's just self projects and I never did anything very visual. So a lot of this stuff, I, I knew I wanted a good framework. I highly valued, uh, really good frameworks, really good names. I, I felt like I had good habits, but I just, you know, didn't know anything. So I immediately was like, okay, how do you do this? And I learned that you could just make an HTML document out of like a text file and double click it and it opens in the browser. And I was like, whoa, what? how's the browser do that, man? And I learned about, you know, the browser. And I was so confused on what JavaScript even was. And I kind of view it just as kind of like C++ for the web. But there's all these like levels to it and it, every level goes deeper and it doesn't make anything simpler. Uh, but what tipped me into to learning all this stuff, because I had no intention of learning like any of this, uh, but I was working on my website. So here's like my website. And I was making these like uh, comparison things. And I was really into this. I really want to step up my review game and make these really comprehensive comparison areas. But it's like horribly difficult to get. Uh, so I used Wix like years ago. So this is a Wix website. And I used it years ago to initially make my site. Like, what is it? Is it on the bottom? It's like 2012 era. Yeah, 2012. So a freaking super long time ago. And I didn't know anything. And so it was really, really friendly, but it looks so freaking dated. Things don't dynamically resize like I'd like them to. Um, the, the styles and things are just more pains to work with than I wanted. But I started, at this point, I had a lot more programming experience. So I started screwing around with the JavaScript they do allow you to do. And I wanted to make one row higher than another. And every they have things that are randomly limited. I didn't understand why. Their profile system I wasn't happy with. So I was just like, I'm done with Wix. I'm just done with it. I am going to just code my own thing. And I'm going to make it as awesome as I want it to be. And so... That's what caused me, it, it, what specifically, there was one variable in particular. It was the dang row height. They have a variable that lets you control the column width. But you see how stuff's like cut off here. And, and getting the the Excel to produce a comma separated value that works nicely with their thing was kind of a pain. But like changing the row height, row, row width, you can, the uh, column width you can do. They have nothing for row height. And I looked at like every form and all this stuff. And I was like, I was like, I'm done with Wix. I'm just done. I can't handle the stupidity that they have with some of these limitations. Uh, I don't know why you can do this, but you can't do this. I don't understand who thought it was a good idea to not give you controls over. They, row width was the one that pushed me over. But there was just all these other things. And I and see, I've been giving Wix, you know, a bunch of money each year to keep the site up. And now I've learned you can host a site for free. You can have a very specific custom ability for free. You can even get the dang little certification thingy for this for free. So I was like, and I have plenty of ambition to learn all this stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and, you know, see you later, Wix. Uh, probably a great solution for other people. I'm not saying that I, I hate Wix. It's actually amazing compared to GoDaddy. Completely crushes the GoDaddy editor. That thing's a piece of trash. So anyways, yeah, there's all this, by the way, in this whole thing, I never looked at WordPress because I wanted to go like hard code all the way. Uh, I plan to look at it in the future. So if WordPress was like the way to go the whole time, uh, oh, well, I was kind of like, I was like, I want to learn like down in the nitty gritty. So when I decided to learn it, I was like, I want to know it like all the way. So there was this, uh, my brother though, he's a software engineer, but he's always traveling. So he's home at the time. And he saw that I was really struggling with some of this code stuff and, and he knew like I was decent at figuring crap out. So he showed me, this is what convinced me I could learn it. So I, cause I had to have a moment where I was like, I believe I can do this. And it was uh, the moment he showed me W3 schools. So you, you guys probably already know about it, but like, check it out. You could be like W3 schools. Uh, and I was like, how to make a header. 
or in fact, the, the one I was looking for was tables because I was interested in how this works. I didn't realize there was this thing called CSS tables and this whole data structure at the time. Like now I know, but like this kind of stuff, I was like, what? You can just make that like right there and you can click this dry it yourself and they show you all the code and you can render it and screw around with it like this. And, and looking at the code, this is like code you can learn just by looking at it. Like no one needs to tell you what this stuff does. Like you have a container, you put stuff in the container like end of container. So I was, that's pretty much HTML. And at the time I didn't realize that H2 or like the P tag or, or some of these tags had special meanings because I was like, I was coming from like assembly. So I was like, man, this is great. This is just like where you can just put a tag and just say, go to this tag. Like in assembly, you could really literally like type on a line like barf. And then on another line, you could just like call barf and it would just go to where barf's at and start executing from there. So I was like, Holy snaps, it's just like that. So that's how I saw it. So I was naming this stuff whatever the heck I wanted. And I didn't realize that. Uh, but I had the uh, structure mindset. So I started, I was like, there's probably special tags. So I started learning them, like the header, like header tags, um, stuff like that. And this is where I was introduced to what CSS was. And I was like, and at the time I was like, oh, cool. You can like give properties to these things. And you don't have to like define any of this stuff because it's already defined like for you. So I started messing around with this HTML type stuff. The first roadblock I hit was I was like, how? So I wanted to, so I started doing this. I immediately went to making my website and uh, let me pull up. So you've seen my, this is my dad's website thing right now. So let me pull up mine. So also let me know if there's an easier way to do this. Cause in order to switch projects, I go to a new window and then I go to file and I open up a new folder or a folder. And then I go to where my files are stored. So I'm pretty sure this is not the best way to do it. But anyways, that's how I do it. I know there's like workspaces. Are workspaces really that much faster? Like I screwed around with them for a bit. But anyways, I, I'm I, if so, I think some values workflow, I'll do that. So I started immediately going after this. I was making um a header, a header thing. And the thing about headers is like, look at, for example, look at my like prime glass one. But if I click around, they, you know, it's on every single page. So if you want to change something about your header, you have to change it on every freaking page. And some of these videos I was watching, they copy and pasted the header onto every page. And I was like, I do not believe <laughs> like this screams not modular to me. And it, it also screamed, this isn't how it's done. There's no way. Because if you have to make change, because let me show you a header file. Uh, we'll go to public routes or not routes, views. Uh, partials so see my name partials and like a header if you're going to change like all these links now this one's not like all set up yet but if you if i had to change this if i change this one right here if i had copy and pasted this into every single dang route view like say all these things existed yeah if i change one i gotta go and change them all it's gonna take forever like it's a terrible workflow i'd rather have a way that i edit it here and then i just go to like my file and i say you know use this file which is exactly what this is so but the thing is HTML doesn't inherently support this. And I started Googling it and none of this stuff was making any kinds of sense. Uh, there were a bunch of solutions using all this different stuff. And I was like, all this stuff seems like pretty complicated. And this is where, so this is the, I knew this was gonna start happening because, so I was kind of ready for it. This is where I found out about PHP. And this is really dangerous. And I, I, I see I'm lucky. I, I think I'm lucky. Maybe I'm really wrong. Maybe I'm super unlucky and I have the wrong view on this. But I was aware that I had to be really careful about the languages I was learning. I wanted to know what the languages were for and what they did. And that I was using the one that was really the right one to use, not just the first one I came across. So with HTML and CSS, it's everywhere. And, and it's super standard. And I looked it up, you know, that's what everyone uses that. So no questions there. When I came across PHP, they were like, this is how you include a file using PHP. And I looked up PHP, which is something I don't think most new people would do if you're like brand, brand new to just programming at all. But I looked it up and it's because I wanted a good uh, architecture to build on. Like, so, cause I'm looking for, you know, something based, based around architecture. So I'm already thinking like ahead cause I'm like, I do not want to do this later on. And so, I'm looking at this and I come across PHP and then JavaScript and then this thing called Node, which I didn't know what that was. And uh, all, and Node comes with all this other stuff. 
And so now I'm trying to weigh what the heck is PHP? What the heck is JavaScript? I'm beginning to understand backend, frontend a little bit better. And at this point, it's like, okay, the general consensus I found was PHP is great, fast, and easier. You know, whatever that means, because I, I didn't really get into it. So I don't know. But Node.js can do all of it. So why learn PHP? Because a, a bunch of people were saying it can't do everything. So they go, okay. And also, you will run into Node.js. You may not run into uh, PHP. Or you'll run into JavaScript. But you might not run into PHP. So I was like, okay. And my brother heavily encouraged. Because he saw, I, I was starting up an Apache server and uh, doing all this stuff. And he's like, ah, you really ought to look more into the to the node thing so i did and so i decided to scrap any effort at php so i actually know zero still about it i mean i know a little but nothing is significant i'd have to start at square one uh but with node i started going down that route and with my site once i got the header to show up so um let me like turn this thing on uh and we will go to the local host so first off, learning how to do that, that was like a whole nother hurdle. But, you know, I got this working. I had this. I used some W3 stuff. And I, I began to be a lot more concerned with like styles and looking because I like this just. Mm, I've never been a fan of this background picture and all this stuff. So I, I'm very interested in making it look a lot more modern. And I'd also like to include code that like grows like stuff out like using math functions and you know i have huge way bigger visions for the site than what i what i had initially because i'd like to be able to have since that run like right in the browser and all this stuff uh so anyways started messing with that uh got stuff like this working and i was like dude this is this is freaking dope man and learned about this like local web host server thing and and that's the, i was experienced uh, i was introduced to express and express once i had express down or not down i would say but once i knew about it um in this whole app concept uh i still didn't understand n what node.js really was I, I, don't, I don't even know if i still if i do yet but basically you can use all these like packages uh, these npm packages to install and then you can like use the code there so after I had that done, I immediately turned my attention to uh, doing a profile login system. <laughs> I didn't know if that was a big goal or not. I was like, oh, I guess I'll find out. I'm going to go for it. So I started looking at this. Uh, and by the way, the include function, uh, this thing is because of the EJS templating. I still don't entirely know what the templating means or is because I didn't look it up extensively. But instead of using HTML, you write this templating thing, which interfaces with the Express engine, I guess. And in your app, you can tell it like, hey, you know, if this is the crap and you could tell it um, to render the crap, like, you know, do stuff with it. And this one's a little fancier because I'm, I'm doing stuff with like, I figured out the login system. So I found, so I, I started turning my attention towards the login system. I was like, all right, I'm going to get this login system because I figure that's going to be kind of core. So probably figure that out sooner than later and started going through it. Found this, there's a whole bunch of tutorials. And when you come across tutorials like this, you get to play the the cut and paste game because you know this tutorial might have like x y z but it's missing w and q and this one over here has w but it's got this other junk that messes up w so you got to like unjunk the w so you can use it in your project and then you know you still don't have whatever m missing letter there is so you go to some other tutorial and now you watch that one so now you're like trying to figure out did i ever do that did i not do that do i need to include this and this is where i think having some c plus plus knowledge actually kind of paid off because i was able to unwind most stuff and get stuff working so uh, i got connected to a database which i was ecstatic about able to send user data back and forth and i was able to uh, get a, a working login system so all this stuff doesn't work because I spent all my time on this, on the back end. And this is all still week one. So they, I'm just having all these revelations and stuff. Around this time, my brother actually goes on his next business trip. He does LiDAR scanning stuff and a bunch of programming stuff. So he, he goes to do that. And uh, I have my profile and login. You can actually log in, set up a profile. It will dynamically grab information here. and Or you could use a local thing and set that up. So I was freaking stoked. Like I'm cooking around in the back end. And around this time, I learned that my dad... Uh, has invested a significant amount of money into doing 
a uh, he wants to set up this like uh, auto form fill out thing, and he wants to do this so that he can give it to um, certain accounts he has because he does auto glass, right? So he he's got some some people are companies and some people are people. So, you know, your guy with the car, and, or are you a fleet? Like you got all these buses, and you have a certain bus window that breaks. So he wants to do this form thing. So he actually went down this route because he wants to innovate with his company and like make it better. And, but the thing is, this innovation would require the website that he currently has with GoDaddy to become something that would work on a... Uh, he needed the code because the widget that he was using was going to not look good on GoDaddy. Because at this point, I knew enough on how to screw around with it. And I, and I kind of knew this just from you know knowing a little bit of programming in general. Uh, so I use the embedded element that GoDaddy provides, but positioning it and getting it to look good is like a complete and utter nightmare. So I looked into this thing called cPanel and I started learning about that when that's where I got introduced to uh, DNS settings. So this is all near the end of the first week. And I was explaining to my dad and he wanted me to be brought on to learn more about this other thing because he knew I was pretty decent programming. And my other brother, who's the actual software engineer, is, you know, off software engineering <laughs> go figure so i'm like okay whatever you know i'll do it in the times that i in the free time that i have so learn about this this thing and that's where i was like we got to redesign this site we got to code it from the ground up and i had already figured out most of the login system so it's like hey why don't i give it crack a go at just coding this thing from the ground up i'm pretty sure i can figure it out now so i started working on this and the uh the header oh my gosh the dang header was my first nightmare so i figured after working on my site, I knew that uh, this one, Prime Glass, would not need a, uh, you know, this. There's not going to need to be a login thing. There, There's some things with subdomains that he wanted. So if he has an account that, like, he really likes, he's going to have a, a special page that only that account can get to. And he wanted to do it. And I figured we could do it through subdomains and things. So I was doing all stuff with DNS. Another issue we had was things were still not secure via SSL. So you see this, like... This has like a little like exclamation mark. Uh, Google doesn't like that at all. And it's the thing that sets up the like, this site's not secure, blah, 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 bark, bark, bark at you. And it's like, oh crap. So you really, really don't want to do this. But the thing is, but services like want to charge you for this. And I was like, well, shoot, how do you like, you know, avoid, avoid this and without paying a ton of money? Because I figured this is, if Google's punishing all these sites and it's everywhere, the chances of you having to pay for it, I just didn't, I felt like it was pretty suspicious. Like you were sure maybe, because that's how domains are. You got to pay for your domain. But uh, I was like, this seems, mm. so it's called SSL and it's, uh, it has to do with the HTTPS that you see at the beginning. And I'm not like, you know, I'm still learning. I know nothing. I just know enough to know that this is pretty sus that all these companies are charging you like seven bucks a month because at the end of the year, you know, that's a bunch of money that you're just going to be accumulating. I was like, maybe not. So I looked it up and it turns out there's this thing called Get Encrypted that makes these certificates that you can use for free. And you just got to know a little bit about DNS and stuff. And uh, that's where I got introduced to Cloudflare. And so I was setting up subdomains and doing all this stuff while also trying to figure out CSS, what the heck JavaScript was, what the heck jQuery was, and this whole thing like sort of came together. So at this point, I'm working on this header thing, and I get to the point where the header thing, you know, I've got my stuff, and I'm using floats for everything at the time. Okay, I still don't know about Flexbox, and I still don't know about Grid, and uh, nothing of this exists down here. It's all just... A, it's just actually a bunch of blue strips is what I made to fill it in. And I still didn't know the best way to structure the HTML because at this point, I'm like, I should probably come up with a structure. And I wasn't sure if people use divs. I was using multiple IDs and I learned that that's like super wrong. You're not supposed to do that. You have classes. And I was like, oh, what's a class? And I was still learning how the uh, cascading style sheet, the CSS, how it's still like picked what to do. And how to select elements, which was a complete and utter disaster for me. So, okay. At this point, this project sort of froze. And I went over to my dad's project. You see, this is the issue. Again, if someone knows. Ah, dang it. I got it. So, I go visual. And then I click new window. And then I go to file. And then I go to open folder. And then I go to my projects. And then I go down to the P's. Because it's, it's prime glass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here's the site. And at this point, you know, I still don't know like what the best way to do this is and the style sheet oh my gosh okay and i also know there's two style sheets 
I was I was brand 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 new. Okay, so give me a break. I still need this here. I need to like move stuff over. But <laughs> we're gonna go over to the index styles. I I start. Oh, this is text style index styles, and this is one massive style sheet. And at this point, I'm like, okay, well, let's uh, let's start looking at this. And I I see that like you have to call it if it's like an element in your tags, then you have to like just write write the tag. But if it's an ID, it needs a hash. And if it's a class, it needs a dot. And if there's like a dot space dot, then it's going to look for like, if you hover over, it actually like shows you. So it's looking for the element and then inside those elements. But if you have like a dot and then like no space in a dot, like it, it does, it looks at it differently. And I did not, I slowly began to understand this, but it was so, so frustrating not understanding because there was this and it was combined with a uh, position and there's like all these different positions and then you have display and these three elements combined confused the living crap out of me for a good chunk of time until I finally realized that you could type this you could type border and then you could type like three pixels solid and make it like red and also people oh yeah you need a semicolon people like knew like the hex and every video I watched, they like knew what the hex values were. I was like super impressed. I was like, these people are crazy memorizing like hex values. So I don't know if there's like a system for that. But uh, anyways, yeah, doing this, I was like, uh, I began to see where boxes were because I was having issues like this. Okay. So I had found this uh, thing on code pen. I, I began to watch like these code battles. So this is like, we're in week two territory now. And I really wanted to use this arrow thing in my project. But I had to learn how to get it into the element, how to get it to inherit its own styles and change it to do what I wanted it to do. And also, look at this. If I hover over it, so you see, if I click on this, it's going to work. But this element right here, yeah, it's not it's not doing the thing. There it is. You see this dumb box? This is the actual box you have to click on to make the arrow move. And I have a way of now so that it, it doesn't matter if I click on it or not. This was a nightmare. This took me like two days to figure out. I forced myself to figure out how the uh, the heading specificity works. Because the second I, I put that border box and I saw this dumb square and I saw it moving up and down, it actually moves a little. I was like, oh crap, that's what's going on. So I started looking at this and you see when I click, it actually like changes the classes. This is when I began to get into JavaScript, but then this also introduced my confusion with jQuery and node modules in general. So I looked up, how do you change this? And see Stack Exchange, you know, the Stack Exchange. You don't know what you don't know. So there were answers that were in JavaScript and there were answers that were in jQuery. And I thought they were the exact same thing, except one had these weird dollar signs on it. And uh, yep, that, that caused a lot of confusion because I was trying to mix like jQuery statements with JavaScript statements. And, and just, you know, you can't do that. So at least I don't think you can. And I started trying to do things that, that uh, I still don't have a, the greatest grip on how the functions like technically work. Because I wanted to just declare functions and then use them. But then how do you declare a function and then use it in another file? And I started, I started doing things that I think were just way too complicated. But uh, the whole idea was to toggle classes so I could control styling, right? And... Uh, the nesting of things is what caused the great issue here. But once I got this working, I had to figure out how to position it because it was in a weird spot in the hierarchy that I was now beginning to understand. And I wanted stuff like, you know, this moves, this appears, this like changes. There's a blue strip that underlines that appears that looks, you know, oh yeah, that's, mm, that's so good, right? And, uh, you know, that moves a little bit. And you also, you don't have to click on this to close it. I could click off of it. Because if you're using your phone, you don't want to have to, you know, go all the way up to the top of the screen to to close it again. Uh, I'm still not sure the best solution of possibly. Maybe I move it down here. I honestly don't know. I hate it when stuff's at the top of the screen. It's so hard on bigger phones to uh, to click it all the way up there. Uh, and getting this drop down to appear and disappear. And when it's really small, I had to get the logo to disappear and reappear. And, oh, well, that doesn't. Oh, well, okay. So I determined I'm aware of this issue. <laughs> back trailing now uh, I'm aware of this but I figured no one's going to be resizing their screen like this and run into this in any sort of important way um, but I could go back and fix this now I had other things to worry about at the time 
Uh, but once they go big enough, the, the resize function kicks in. So let me show you exactly like what's going on there, right? So I figured this out, but at the time I was trying to do stuff like that. And for this, I discovered media queries. So I was doing everything with media queries. And after some more research, I decided to settle on 1000 pixels for medium screens. And um, I think I, set, I settled on that just in general, but I designed the screens to work all the way down to 320 pixels. Because uh, I was looking up and, and a lot of people were like, you know, as far as small screens go, that's a good size to stop at. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm, I'm going to design down to there. But it just brought up all these new issues and the header just became a total disaster zone. Uh, I spent the whole second week on like just the header. And I wanted this uh, animation thing. People were using transitions and stuff. But finally, I came across a video that mentioned keyframes. And this is how the blue line appears. Man, this is so much easier to use. Then other people were like installing modules to do stuff like this. And I was like, it's baked in and it's like freaking two things. Like it's crazy. So, and it's so convenient, like from two, so intuitive. So this was like a revelation. And at this point, I'm beginning to get this, but you saw I was toggling stuff. So at this point I'm in the header and I'm copying like regular JavaScript. So like here's like regular JavaScript, but I always found the JavaScript, pure JavaScript stuff to look like kind of confusing. So I went down the jQuery route and I actually ditched a ton of functions that I had that were kind of doing the same thing for jQuery. Because it's really easy. Like you can use this closest function. It's so convenient. I know pe people were saying like now you got to load jQuery and all this stuff. But other people were saying that if you have this like jQuery tag, it'll grab it from like the nearest server. And once it's loaded in the cache, it's already there. And if a site already uses jQuery, then by chance, it's probably already in the cache. So you can just it won't cause any extra stress on what's going on. I don't know if that's right or wrong. That's what I read. I was like, you know what? Freaking, I just want a thing that I can understand right now. So I went down that. I started working on fundamentals at the same time. So I'd spend a little time just learning about stuff. Um, and so like programming channels, like uh, I forgot what he's, his name, but he's like, people call him the CSS King. Uh, Web Dev Simple was like fantastic resource. The Net Ninja was a fantastic resource. Um, and the coding train, fantastic resource. So all these, and there are a bunch of others, like there's so many. And that combined with Stack Exchange and W3 schools, by those powers combined, I was figuring out how to make a website. So got this working out and pretty, pretty happy with where this was going. You could see like, I began to move into this and the media query thing and the moving elements around began to be a thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And I decided to make a resize function. So that's why they're like broken up. And in the resize function, I like this because I was able to just declare a size in one spot. So you see I have like a phone size and a screen, a screen size thing. I also did not understand in CSS, the order things come in can matter because I figured it because I read that if it's just more specific, it'll do that thing. But if um, you can have like styles directly in HTML, you can have the style tags in HTML and you can have the, uh, the things afterwards so i didn't understand that like media queries had to be after other stuff so i've got like multiple sets of media queries that i really just need to put all in one but uh yeah so you can see here you know javascript this is when i finally was like i was doing something simple enough that i like understood i'm like oh dope this is like javascript and it was at this point i finally understood jquery was like its own thing kind of it was like a, a weird mix of things but you couldn't mix them and they were kind of different and you had to declare them like in separate functions. And I and uh, started getting into that and, and looking up my Google searches became much more profitable when I started understanding some of this stuff like events and uh, how to recognize the differences in the syntax. So around the end of week two, I had my header pretty figured out. And at week three, I was just adding stuff all over the place. I added the email functionality to the app because of the stuff I had done with the profile system on my previous attempt on my website. I um, I got used to how the app, uh, the app.js works. And I was able to be a lot more confident with the routes. And like I'm using environment variables now, like I understood stuff like this and I was able to make a working thing that worked with a specific engine using node mailer based off of stuff I was reading. Now I no longer necessarily required uh, videos to show me how to do every little thing. And, um, you know, I was, I was away in cooking. I, documentation began to make more sense to me. 
So I was pretty stoked about about this. So uh, things were flying pretty smoothly, and uh, there were there were a ton of other things. Like uh, I guess one other major thing that occurred was you see these like galleries. Oh my gosh, this was like the greatest challenge. So if you go to W three schools, they have like two or three pictures on on how to do this, but they use the picture ID to do this. But if you do that. You can't make a general gallery that's going to work because I have a bunch of galleries with huge numbers of pictures. And I was like, I do not want to have it so that I have to write like the function. You basically have to write a new function for every picture. And there was no clear way to get the picture clicked on with JavaScript. But, you know, eventually using jQuery, I figured it out. So if you go to gallery, I had already made the auto gallery, but I wanted to make it more general. So that when you clicked on the picture, it pops out. Everything turns kind of grayish. And you saw how when I moved around, it turns a little bit gray and sort of gets a little bit bigger. So that's what all this does is um, first I had I had the code from most of the examples had this. And I saw on some videos that were literally just saying what was on W3 schools. I almost wanted to comment like, you know, get off YouTube. <laughs> like, why are you plagiarizing this? I don't understand. Like, it was literally plagiarism. There was nothing different. Like, it's like they were reading the website and claiming it was theirs. I was pretty angry about some of that, but, uh, yeah, so I started messing with this and the moment I finally figured out how to grab the picture and feed it and see the problem was the grabbing an SRC was new to me. I didn't understand how to get that. And I had to, I had to filter it so that when I clicked on a picture, it only grabbed a part of it, uh, that I wanted. And that, that was like complicated to me because I was brand new but I figured it out and uh, after a while because I had like a general tagging uh, ID thing going that I just was using and I, I had to understand what things I needed to change so after several hours of trying which in retrospect was significantly shorter than some of the stuff I spent on the header trying to figure out because I now understood the languages better um, I had a working a working photo gallery that you could click on and like use so uh, yeah, it is like, whew, buddy, man. So after all this, I have all this and I'm like, okay, I'm now ready to tackle trying to, to deploy this thing. So I was like, how the crap do you upload a Node.js thing? And I looked the head up. There's a hundred videos, uh, deploy this, deploy that, deploy this. That's when I began to get a much better grasp of, oh, by the way, I never used Git before. And so I was like, well, shoot, how the heck does Git work? And I, I began to get more into that. Um, and I began to understand much better dependencies here. And I used Heroku and it threw a fit over and over. I spent a few hours. I have like 20 deployments on Heroku uh, trying to get it to work. And it was finally, I, I realized I needed to move Nodeman and the dot ENV over. I'm sure there's uh, probably a better way to do this. Like, um, I need to remove things for a production environment. Like I realized that now after the fact, but got that, had to, uh, enter the environment variables into Roku itself and then figuring out this dang SSL thing and all the DNS server crap to make it so that Google was like, your website's chill, man. It's, it's secure. Like you click on this and you're like, Oh, look at that oh, connection is secure. It's so beautiful. And then figuring out, because there's actually like several domains that go here, and there's that special subdomain with that special file that I wanted to point to that. So I had to learn about CMake names and a, a, I'm not sure if it's a tag or whatever they call it, but which one to use and why you would use it. All this garbage with DNS. But here we are. It's been a month. I've learned a ton. I now know several languages I didn't know before. Um, and in the meantime, I actually experimented with using vector libraries and creating math things. Um, <clears throat> so I plan on focusing a little bit more on PHP. Going to get my website up and running and out there. Look into WordPress because I, I think that probably is something, a, a big oversight I may have. Uh, check that out. I'd also be interested in learning a little bit more about PHP, but it sounds like uh, Node is pretty much going to have whatever I want because, you know, They've got just, they've just got everything. But that's my journey. Um, I know this is kind of a long video. So if you stuck with it to the end, like, geez, thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I really enjoy sort of solving problems like this. Um, it feels like you're kind of solving a mystery. It's fun, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, what do you think? You got any advice for me? I know there's probably some massive things in my code that you're like, that is 
not an efficient way to do it. Um, I did come up with a small structure. Like I came up with strips and containers that I could port around uh, a little more easily. Things I, I still need to look into are like layouts. Oh yeah, Fle I didn't even get into Flexbox. When I discovered Flexbox, I like hated and loved it at the same time because it would always do stuff that I didn't kind of expect. That's when I discovered Grid and I was pretty much Grid from there on out and occasionally grabbed Flexbox because I, I was looking for things to make center. And eventually I just made a class that wrapped. I learned that in order to do certain things, you have to wrap classes in order to um, make it so that it will inherit the properties from it. Uh, stuff like stuff like that uh, specifically for this uh, video container right here like getting it to resize nicely like that so it actually shrinks and grows um, was kind of a pain and it involved wrappers because this is being done in an iframe which I have now learned everyone hates and they are the devil uh, but anyways with that thanks for listening and watching uh, I'm excited to keep pushing stuff out there's still music stuff coming i've i've been working my other jobs like regularly it just uh this has just been a big private project i've kind of poured all extra time into when i'm not exercising so thanks a bunch and have a blessed day